Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Stamp and Chat Live. I am Gina from Gina K Designs, and I'm so excited to have you all here with us tonight. I see so many of you coming in from all over the country and all over the world. Um, I just want to start off by saying that for those of you that are in the path of Hurricane Laura, I hope that you are somewhere safe and tucked away and waiting out the storm where you can be safe and maybe just uh, tuning in just to get away from all of the craziness. I am I'm praying for all of you. That is quite a storm coming up your way. Also, so many of our friends out west who are dealing with fires. And I saw some of the comments earlier where everybody was like, oh my goodness, fires and, and riots and all kinds of things that are happening right now. You know, the two most powerful warriors are patience and time. And I think that, you know, right now we just have to try to be patient with each other and we just have to give all of this some time. It's it, all emotions are heightened right now. And it's good to focus some of that energy and nervousness into your craft room and just relax and uh, and make some cards. And, you know, I, I still believe there are good people in the world. And if you can't find one, be one. All right. Well, welcome, everyone. Oh, I see it's hot in Tucson right now. Whew. Um, I'm just looking here, everybody's saying hello, and I, I can now see the comments off to the side here. So I'm going to try to keep up with some of your questions tonight, too. And I also have Tom here, who's going to try to keep up with them while I'm actually working if I can't look up. But we, uh, we're we in a heat wave, too. It was 91 today, the heat wave, or the heat index felt like 95. So it's pretty hot all over the place. So tonight we're going to cool down with the brand new Peace, Love and Sushi kit. We're going to make some rainbow cards and I'm going to show you some fun alternate rainbow ideas. So here are the sets that we're going to use tonight. We're going to start with this set here. This is the, Tom, can we go to the overhead? This is the Flower Child stamp set. And this is from the new Peace, Love, and Sushi stamp kit, our new kit. And I'm going to use this big flower image, and I think I'm going to use one of these greetings, and I'm going to show you how to alter a die to use this greeting, and I'll alter a die cut. And then I'm also going to use this set. This is our incentive set that we have right now. It's called Take Care. And I'm going to use this We're All in This Together greeting with some of these silhouette images. Does that just make you sing that song, We're All in This Together? But we are. And I really like this set because right now these are the kind of um, greetings I want to use for the different friends of mine that I'm sending cards to. We're all in this together. Stay safe and take care. And that is a great message for everybody tonight. All right, so we're gonna start with a little bit of ink blending. And I have a nice quarter sheet size piece of cardstock. And I'm gonna just grab a scrap piece of paper here to lay this on. So I hope that's bright enough, everybody can see well. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with a pastel rainbow because I think that we overlook pastel colors. Now my typical rainbow, and I'll just show you my typical rainbow colors that I use. I usually use red velvet, tangerine twist, wild dandelion, lucky clover, and turquoise sea. I really like that. And then if I wanna add a purple, I use wild lilac. Don't always get to the purple, but if there's room for it, I'll add wild lilac. That's my real bright rainbow. Sometimes I'll use blue raspberry or blue lagoon, but that is my typical rainbow. But we forget that we've got beautiful pastel colors that can create a rainbow too. And I was actually looking at a real rainbow the other night, and I think these actually look more like the colors in that rainbow. So this is Innocent Pink and Peach Bellini, because I want to have a red or a bright pink or a pinkish red. So Innocent Pink is a very reddish pink. It's not a purpley pink like um, bubble gum. Let me show you the difference. Here is the bubble gum pink. You see how that's a brighter, more, it's got more blue in it, where this has a little bit more red or more of a warmer tint to it. So I want to use Innocent Pink, Peach Bellini, Sweet Corn, uh, 
And then I think I have it over here somewhere. Then I'm going to try to mix in a little bit of apple mint and then ocean mist. So I think that's going to be a really pretty rainbow to try tonight. Now I'm using my regular blending brushes that I always do. I have this wide array of all kinds of brushes where I don't even know where I got half of them. Um, and what I did to clean them, and I'll just show you quickly what I did. So when I have a blending brush that has too much of a bright pink on it, what I do is I'll take the tidy towel. Let me move my cardstock out of the way. I'll take the tidy towel and I'll take a piece of paper towel. And I like something that's kind of textured. And then I'll take the blending brush and I'll rub it onto the tidy towel and then I'll rub it onto the um, piece of paper towel. And I'll do that several times until most of the color comes off. Now this actually had a really bright pink on there. So now I think it's light enough that it's not going to interfere too much with my innocent pink. So hopefully I'm not blocking too much of my light coming in. I've got ink pads just piled up all over the place. Let's see if we can back up a little bit here too. Okay, so I'm gonna start with Innocent Pink. And I'm gonna get a lot of that color on here. This is gonna be a very light, pale, pretty rainbow. Very light and pale. So I'm starting at the top here and I'm bringing that color down. And remember, you know, you look at it and you go, well, wait, that's not bright enough. You know, it's not going to get really bright because these are pastel colors. I'm going to see how much I can blend, see if I can get a little purple in there at the bottom too. So you can see Innocent Pink has a lot of peachy feel to it already. So this is going to be a really nice blend with Peach Bellini. And I try not to get too much ink on there all at the same time. So what I'm, what I'm saying is I try not to go so dark. I rather go over it a second time and layer the ink on so it's not blotchy. So don't be afraid if your ink looks like it's going on too light. You can always go back and add more layers on it and deepen it up a bit. And the pastels, they're a little trickier to work with because they are so light that you might have to do, you know, four or five layers of the color to get it as deep as you want without it looking blotchy. So there's my first color, my innocent pink. So for my tidy towel, I saw somebody ask how I store my tidy towel. And I have a cute little storage container. Let's see if I can grab it. It's by, where is it? Oh, here it is. I just wet them all. This is by a company on Etsy called Make It by Marco. And they have these nice little containers and the tidy towel fits right in there. And then it allows it to breathe so it doesn't get moldy. So that's a great way to store them. You will have to re-wet it when you, you know, get up the next day and you start crafting again. But that's not really a problem. Okay, so now I'm going to go in with some Peach Bellini. So I want to really ink up the Peach Bellini here. And I'm going to go in light-handed with the peach. So this is going to make up for my orange. I'm telling you, I've seen so many skies in this color, especially this time of year. You really start to see this pinky, peachy, sky at night, sunset. Okay, we're gonna keep going and then we're gonna put some um, pink back into this. Get it up there into the pink a little bit. And now we'll go back to Innocent Pink. Ink this up again. And I'm gonna go right over that line. And remember, when the ink dries, it gets that nice airbrushed look. So don't worry if it looks a little blotchy while you're blending, it really does smooth out. Okay, so now I'm gonna go with my yellow and my yellow is sweet corn. Now I really had a ton of wild dandelion on this brush and oh my goodness. Um, but I really washed a lot of that off. All right, so we'll get that in there. 
And I'm really starting a lot on the peach. Just want to bring it down gently. Okay. You can start to see it looking more yellow as I pull away there, but that's still a really nice blend. You see that? Still a really pretty blend. And again, I think the big key to really good ink blending is, of course, you want to have a good ink. And I do believe in my ink. I think it's a great ink. But another component is having really good cardstock. And when I say good cardstock, I mean super, super smooth cardstock. And our, um, our white cardstock is so smooth. And that's why it just blends so nicely. So now I'm going to add some apple mint in here. A link for the tidy towel container. Um, yeah, I don't know if Rebecca from Make It by Marco is on. If you are here, Rebecca, feel free to link your Etsy, stop, Etsy shop. Um, but it's called Make It by Marco. And um, if I can't, like, if it, nobody links it, then I will definitely link it. Oh, look, I got a little ink on my cardstock. Um, I'll link it over in our Facebook group. Okay, so you can see this is very light and very pretty, but tell the truth. I mean, y'all have seen real rainbows. Don't they almost look like this more than they do those real bright colors when you look at them in the sky? I think I'm going to try to get the purple in there. So I'm going back in with a little bit of yellow over that apple mint. We won't worry about that because I'll cut it out with a with a with one of the shape dies. <laughs> we'll hide that. Oops. Okay. And then I'm gonna use ocean mist. And ocean mist, I think, is a little bit softer than our sea glass. Both of them are very soft. So if you have sea glass, by all means, use it. It'll still look very beautiful. But when sea glass came along, I felt like I wasn't giving Ocean Mist as much love as I should have. And uh, so I want to get it back in the mix here because it is a beautiful blue. You and your brushes would be well, um, we have a huge shipment of them coming. They told me last time I checked, I guess that was the last time I told you about it, that they thought that they would be ready to go in about 30 days. So we're getting very close now. We're getting very close. But I don't have exact dates of anything anymore. The way all of our shipping and manufacturing and everything has been delayed, I, I almost am afraid to make a promise. <laughs> so it'll be as big a surprise to me as it will be to you. All right, I'm going to add more apple mint in here. And I use my ink pads so much that I really do need to re-ink them. They are starting to get dry, and I don't re-ink them very often. In fact, most of these colors I've never re-inked, and we've had ink for a long time. But it's good to keep them inky, especially if you do a lot of ink blending, because uh, ink blending does dry them out a little bit more quickly, just because you're grabbing so much ink. Okay. So let's add the purple. I left a little bit of room and I have lovely lavender here. Now I, I am going to have to find a brush that will work. This brush is so purpley right now. So let me see if I can clean it up a bit. If I can get some of that ink off of there. These brushes are by Simon Says Stamp. We didn't hear the question. Oh, I'm sorry. You didn't hear that. And I know a lot of you guys have said Tom needs a mic. And believe it or not, this weekend we're doing some cool things to our studio here. So um, Tom is eventually going to have a mic from the other side. Somebody asked, the question was, uh, when are our blending brushes coming in stock? So that was the question I was answering. They're all white, right? <clears throat> yeah, but that's going to be a little bit of a surprise. <laughs> the color. <laughs> okay. 
You're going to love them. I love them so much. They are just so pretty. All right, so I added a little bit of purple in there. Get a little more in there. Then I'm going to go back over it again with the blue one. Just get a little more blue. So that's just a little hint of purple. I don't even know if that'll make it in the die cut, but we'll see. Okay. So I definitely want to use this for something tonight, but there is a very soft pastel blend and that's, it's a rainbow, but it's not the traditional rainbow that we think of that really, really bright, vibrant rainbow, much softer look. So let's cut this out and then we'll do a couple other blends that I think you're going to really like. Well, at least one other blend that I haven't done before. And then of course we have to do a traditional rainbow if we have time. All right. I'm going to grab my die cutting machine here. That was lovely lavender. Woo, there we go. Oh, and I got to get all these ink pads out of the way so I can open this up. Sorry, I'm a mess here. Okay. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to cut this out using the Master Layouts 2 big die that's stitched. I have that right here, so I can cut it out so that you don't see my goober on the side there. Oh, that's a nice blend. And can you see that now it's starting to really look airbrushed? It's like just really smoothing out. Gotta love that. Okay. So we will cut this. Oh, I'm going to knock all the ink pads over. Oh, there we go. And we'll get that out here for now. And there we go. You can see how pretty that looks. Let me zoom in a bit. I really, really like the stitching on that. And, you, and the stitching shows so much more in the lighter colors. So that is the pastel rainbow. And what I'll do tonight on YouTube is I will list the colors that I used for each of these rainbows. But you can really see how smooth that's getting and how nice that's going to look up against black. I used, um, I used the Master Layouts die, Master Layouts 2 die set to cut this big rectangle. Okay. So let's go on to our next blend, and then we'll make some cards out of this. So for this one, I want to do like a strip going across the center, I think. So I have, um, I have some purple tape here, and I really like the purple tape for masking this way. So I'm going to mask this off here like this. And then I'm going to mask it off. Let me see here. I think, let me do this. I'm going to move that bottom one up a little bit. Because what I want to do with this is I just want to have, I'm going to cut it out with the die, but I just want to have enough space for these cute little images. But I really love the way it looks when the images extend outside of the blending. So you can see, let me zoom in a little more here for you. There we go. You can see how, um, how some of these will be inside, but some of these will extend on the top and the bottom. And I love that look. Okay, so this one, I want to do an autumn rainbow. My thing is all wet here, so this doesn't want to stick to it. Um, I want to do an autumn rainbow. So I was thinking of using faded brick as my red and then tomato soup as my orange, honey mustard and prickly pear, and then maybe a little fresh asparagus or maybe even a little bit of sweet mango in there. 
So this is just going to be a very warm blend. So even though it doesn't have the entire rainbow spectrum, it's going to have a lot of pretty rainbow colors in there. And I'm actually going to use these lighter brushes that I was using before because I'm done with the pastels. And it's a lot easier to go from light to dark than it is from dark to light. So I'm going to start with Faded Brick. Start with a little bit of that. And this might be a little dark, so I'm going to start off the, uh, the paper. And I'm going to come in really super light-handed. Like this. I am barely putting any pressure on the brush at all because Faded Brick can be a really dark color. And it's a beautiful color, but... I don't want it to be that bright or that deep because I'm using it um, with silhouette stamps. So I want the silhouette stamps to really be vibrant. So my next color after faded brick is going to be tomato soup. So this is going to actually be a very, very mild blend as far as transitioning colors because tomato soup is not going to look that far off from faded brick since we're not going real heavy. All right, so I'm going to start up here, and I'm going to work that tomato soup down. The Bling Bling Crafter said your car looks like the sky on her cruise. The Bling Bling Crafter said that? That it looks like the sky on your cruise? Oh, gosh. Remember cruising? That was so fun. <laughs> I miss those days. Uh, someday we'll all be back on our cruise ships doing our thing. We'll all be healthy. It's going to be okay. I'm going to go back in with a little bit more faded brick. And it's true, though. I know exactly what you mean because those, uh, those views off of the cruise ship when the sun is setting and you're pulling out a port and getting ready to go to dinner, that is some romantic sky, I'll tell you that. Okay, so now I'm going to go with, let me get my yellow brush. I think I'm going to go with honey mustard next. This is a pretty color. I love honey mustard. And again, I'm starting like up here and then working my way down. So this is a fall blend. This is a really pretty blend. I like that. So Tom is gonna be back. We're gonna get him back on screen again soon. We are redoing some lighting in our studio here and trying to get, if you saw what this studio looks like, guys, there are wires everywhere. I can't open drawers because there's wires draped across them and we are going to get everything up into the ceiling, which I'm very excited about. My next color is Prickly Pear. So this is a much more yellowy, almost a green yellow. And so this weekend, we're going to be, Tom's going to be up <laughs> wiring things into the ceiling. <laughs> and um, and as, as long as we both survive, we should be able to start doing some more fun things and maybe both of us in the scene at the same time a lot more. He's going to get a microphone. We'll be working on it. It's going to go through some changes. Now I'm going to use Sweet Mango. And this is very vibrant, kind of pumpkin-y. I like that one too. I feel like I need to do one more. Maybe I'll go back to the first one. I'll go back to Faded Brick. I think I'll do that. Going back to the very first one, which was Faded Brick. I'll finish it off on that end. All right, here comes Faded Brick now. Probably not even gonna see this because I'm gonna cut some of this off, <laughs> but that's okay. I think that just finishes it off nicely. All right. So now we're going to take this off here. Pretty, pretty. And take this off here. I like that. What do you guys think of that? That's a pretty autumn, autumn look, huh? 
Oh yes, I see Karen Hightower. Karen is, was right in the line of the storm, but she got out and she is safe. And also Karen has chickens. I don't know if you guys know this about Karen, but she has chickens. And well, she's got like, she might as well have a whole farm because she is such a fantastic gardener. And her, she, they were going to leave their chickens but then as the storm started to get worse, Karen, who is such an animal lover, said to her husband, I just don't want to leave the chickens, even if you get them high up and all, I don't want them to be alone. So her husband built a coop, a chicken coop, in the back of his truck, and they took the chickens with them so the chickens have a place <laughs> to live. This is just the sweetest thing. So the chickens are safe. And they're, they made it. They made the team. Okay, so I'm going to cut this out. Let me see if I can move that up a little bit. I'm going to cut this out so that it's a little bit... I've got a little more white space at the bottom than I do at the top. Boy, and I hope I cut this straight. I'm going to do my best. I could tape it down, but I'm living on the edge here. Okay, let's see if I can smash it down. There we go. I think it's going to be straight. Come on. Okay, there we go. I really need to clean my plates. They shed all of the little black flecks from my black cardstock. So there we go. That's pretty cute. Okay. So while I'm here, I'm going to cut two of the black layers as well. And this is from the Master Layouts 1. I'm gonna cut this down. I could cut it with a paper cutter, but when you cut it with the dies, they're so perfect. So I'm gonna do that. And they do make a lot of cracking sounds. And that's okay. They're supposed to do that. And some people say you could turn them on an angle and they don't make as many cracking sounds and they're a little easier to push through the machine, but I haven't experienced too many problems there. And you can see how perfect that layer is. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, so I'm going to keep this one over here, and then I'm going to cut one more. Right here. And then we're going to do a real bright rainbow blend, but first we're going to do some embossing on it. I think I did a really a really light embossed card or did I do a bright one? I can't even remember. I don't, I think it was fairly light. Let me see if it's laying over here somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. I did a, a very light embossed card for opening night. What's the difference between master layout one and two? So the question is what's the difference between master layouts one and master layouts two master layouts one, they're bigger dies. The, they're not as they're bigger than these. And then the master layouts one has a different size strip that goes down the side or across the center, and it has two ovals, a regular oval and a scalloped oval. Master layouts two, these two panels are a little bit smaller, but it's got a much wider, bigger strip that can go down the center of the card, and it's got flag dies in it. So they're really made over time to mix and match, but if you just get one set, you can definitely do lots of different styles. All right. So one more card here before we start assembling some cards. So this one is gonna be traditional, but first I'm going to emboss it and I wanna use that crazy flower child stamp. So I have my Misty close by and I'm going to put that here. Now, I am not going to worry too much about getting this to go off the edge of the cardstock. I'm going to just put it right up here like this. Put it a little off the edge here. Pick that up with the door of the Misty. And then for those of you who weren't on our last live, I have to show you my friend Chuck Meadows made me this. So you might be in the group seeing a bunch of people <laughs> showing you things that look like this. He calls this the Misty pressing tool. And basically he took a curtain finial, an old finial, 
from a curtain rod. And then he used a lot of Gorilla Glue and he used a um, furniture protector that you put under the foot of a furniture, uh, uh, of like a couch or a chair or something under the foot of furniture. And um, it allows you to press all over the surface of your Misty. Now, some people are, were saying that you don't really need to press that hard, but um, I struggle with it. I always either have to have a microfiber cloth or a long sleeve. And um, this is just fun to use. So if you don't have one or you don't want to make one, a lot of people are making them. I think a lot of ladies are getting their husbands and their sons and their son-in-laws <laughs> to make them. But um, if you don't want to make one, you can just you know, you can use like I have a long sleeve here tonight, so you can use your sleeve. It just slides over better. But this is really fun because it just helps you really make contact easily and you don't have to work too hard. It just slides right over. Okay, before I do my second one, I'm going to get my embossing powder out of here. I use how do I clean my plates of my misty or my die cutting machine? die cutting machine. So um, what I do is first I try tape and I just rub tape all over it to get any bits and pieces of cardstock that might be, you know, stuck in there. And what I resort to a lot is um, a toothbrush and some warm soapy water. And I just get the toothbrush and the warm soapy water and I scrub because the problem is those little black flecks of cardstock and dark flecks of cardstock get caught in the cut lines that you end up getting in your plate and in your teeth. <laughs> I'm not using your toothbrush, Tom, don't worry. <laughs> oh, see, so you guys got to get Tom's face on the screen because you got to see the way he looks at me. I'm not using Tom's toothbrush. I'm using an old toothbrush. I promise. Okay. So there I embossed that, and you can probably see that a little bit. Tell me if you can see that, Tom. Can you see that shine at all? Uh, yes, I did. Okay. Yes. You did once? Okay. All right. So now I'm going to put this piece back in here. And I'm going to put my magnet down there. And then I'm going to clean this stamp with my tidy towel. And then I'm going to, before I lay it down, I'm just going to try to find the right spot. I might not even have to do that die cutting thing. Who but I flower child. Flower child? Oh, we uh, purchased this art from an artist that helps us design a lot of our kit stamps when Alicia doesn't have time to do them all. And uh, she actually works for lots of people, so she doesn't want to be part of the, uh, the team, but uh, she's a wonderful artist and she's designed quite a few things. Now, I got that just a little wet, but I'm hoping that that's gonna work anyway. I think it will, because it's just a little wet mark where Versamark is gonna go. And if it doesn't work, you know, I'll put an embellishment over it, right? When in doubt, embellish. Okay, so there we go. Back to Chuck's tool, Chuck Meadows. Every time I use this, I think of you. Okay. There we go. And now we're going to put this, some powder on there. This is the white powder. It's not the clear powder, but if you don't have white powder, you can use clear powder for this. I think I'm going to leave it like that. And I don't even think I'm going to need a dye, which is really cool because this is going to be really simple and pretty. All right, here we go. Round two. I mean, I'm going to cut it out. Wait a second now something right here that I don't want there. That's going to ruin it. Okay. Um, I'm going to cut it out with the master layouts dies, but I don't know that I'm going to need to cut a die for the greeting. I think it's going to get stamped right on there and I think it's going to look great. Okay. Yes. 
Okay, this is beautiful. I love this stamp so much. I know that everybody has their favorites. Some of you guys, I see so many sushi cards in our forum. And I know you guys are loving the sushi set. And some of you guys love the Lotus set. I love those both. But this I really am having fun with. All right, so I'm going to, this is the faded brick one. So I'm going to clean this before I use it. Just rub that on the tidy towel and get some of that ink off of there. Okay. And then I'm going to use, this is the red velvet. This is a very true red. We have different reds in our collection. And some of the differences in the reds, if you're interested in knowing that, our red velvet would be our truest red, just absolutely red, red, red. And then we have red hot, which has a little bit of an orange hue to it. Now, I'm not going all the way up. I'm just kind of focusing on the design. I might go up a little bit more. Um, and then we have cherry red, which has a hint of pink added to it. So three reds, depending on whether you like a red red, a little bit of an orange red, like a hot red, that would be red hot and uh, cherry red, which has just that little hint of pink. So now I'm using the tangerine twist. Is this tangerine twist? Yeah, it's tangerine twist. This is such a fun stamp set. Tangerine, yep. Okay, so a little more of that. We'll get it darker coming in from the side and then get lighter. And then I'll go back over it with the red along that line to enhance it and blend it. Okay. So you see what's happening here. Who names our ink code? Me. And I'm sure you could tell how hungry I was when I did a lot of them. <laughs> I don't think they heard the question. The, uh, oh, the question is who names our ink colors? And that is me. And so you can tell I was hungry during that process quite a few times because we have a lot of food names, but they really look like those things. So... This is wild dandelion. Tangerine twist, red velvet, wild dandelion. This is like my favorite traditional rainbow blend. And then I'm gonna use lucky clover. I could use jelly bean. I think I'll use lucky clover though. Could use apple mint too. Greens are are tough because they are really different than yellow. So you got to work on the line between them. But you can do it. This just reminds me of like, I don't know, like growing up with fun designs on my t-shirts or kind of designs like this on my jeans. Is there a name for that technique? This technique is called emboss resist. Somebody asked if there was a name for it. It's called emboss resist. So basically you emboss it to match the color of the cardstock. And then as you start to blend that ink, the uh, design shines through. So my final color here is going to be turquoise C. I have such inky fingers. <laughs> Oh, I love this one. Yeah, there's never a bad time for a rainbow. Ever. All right. So what do you guys think of that rainbow? It's pretty fun. Now I am going to use um, a paper towel and I'm gonna rub over this because the ink lays on top of that embossing powder. You can kind of see it coming off there. And when you rub over it, it, the design actually stands out even more because you get that embossing powder off of there and the white lines show so much better. See that? All right, so this one is definitely a um, one that we have to cut out with the master layouts too. And then we will make a few cards. Okay, so let me get my brushes out of the way. I'm so scared to touch anything. You 
guys get like that? You start getting ink in places and like you wash your hands and you come back and you still have ink everywhere. I don't know how it happens, but okay. And we will zoom out again. Here we go. Am I zooming out? I'm not zooming out. There we go. And I'll grab my plates. So yeah, the plates, what I was saying before is, do you see all of the um, kind of like the, the black lines going through the plate? That's actually cardstock that is stuck in the plate. It's not on the plate. It's in the plate where those cut lines were. So that's what I like to scrub out with Tom's toothbrush. I mean, a toothbrush. <laughs> Sorry, hon. <laughs> All right, I'm going to use the master layouts again. I'm going to cut it right like that. That's why I wasn't too worried about, you know, going over the top going outside of the edge because I knew I was going to cut this out. I could probably use the master layouts one, but I wanted the stitched look on this. Okay, so you can see that. That's so pretty. This is a fun stamp set. You know, we don't have a ton of kits left. We're getting really low. I told you guys I ordered like a maniac this time because I hate when we run out of kits, like in the first two weeks. And um, we are getting very low on them, but they are a really good value. So if you are on the edge and you're thinking, well, maybe I only want the sushi set and the dies, or maybe I only want the lotus set and the dies. I'll tell you that, um, you know, when you get the one stamp set and the dies, it's almost as much as the kit. So you get such a good value. All right, so this I'm going to adhere together with some adhesive. I'm gonna find my adhesive. Here we go. So I'm using the Gina K Designs Adhesive Dot Runner. And when you do embossing, sometimes your paper gets a little curly. You guys know that. So I like to use a little extra tape to really make sure everything stays nice and flat. Okay. So now I'm going to add a greeting. Now let's see if my greeting that I wanted to add fits. So, oh yeah, it fits. So I could do hello friend or I could do miss you. I think I'm going to do miss you because that's a greeting that I could really use right now. I love these greetings too for inside. Like if you did hello friend and then you have a friend is one who overlooks your broken fence and admires the flowers in your garden. Or a friend is one who knows you and loves you just the same. That's cute too. I think I will do this little miss you down here at the bottom like that. Okay. So I think I'll use my Misty for this because I don't want to mess this up. Not after all that ink blending. And I already have my design mounted so it's nice and flat. It'll be easy here. And I will zoom back in so that you guys can see all of this a lot closer. Now I have not used this greeting yet so I'm going to just take my finger and rub all over it. When you have clear stamps, they're super clear when you first get them, but if you rub your finger all over them, you see how they get a little bit more cloudy? That will make it take the ink better. It's just got a little residue on there, and you definitely want to get rid of the residue. So it's still sticking to me, though. All right, I really want this to be straight. I think that looks straight. Let's see. I don't know if that's straight. So if you ever get into this position and you're not 100% sure it's straight, what you can do is get it all lined up there, right? And then just put another little piece of cardstock on top just to test it. So let me find my ink cube. And I'm going to ink this up with the black onyx ink cube. And then I'll stamp it and we'll see if it looks straight. That looks straight. All right. So there we go. 
So now I feel good about it. And the only thing that'll mess it up is if I don't have the cardstock in there right. So let's use Chuck's little thing. All right. Yes. Isn't that fun? I love that. Yeah. Yes, you can use a sheet of acetate too. That's a great idea, Joni. A uh, sheet of acetate is great. And you can stamp it first. Make sure you like it. And then you'll be able to see the card through it too. So that's a great idea. I like that. All right. Now I'm going to put this on a card base. And I really feel like with all this gorgeous color that a white card base is what it needs. So let me find a white card base in my mix here. Here we go. Yeah, I'll put that right on there. Nothing jazzes me more than that skinny little black edge that just makes the whole thing pop. <laughs> yes, nothing annoys me more than putting a sentiment on crooked as well, especially when you do all this work. You know, you've got all this beautiful ink blending going and embossing and everything. And then the last thing you do is that greeting and then it's crooked. I know some people do their greeting first when they're coloring. So this way they know the greeting is straight, but I always forget. And then I'm like, okay, well, there you go. Okay. You want me to call Chuck's thing the stamp chucker? <laughs> this is the stamp chucker. <laughs> oh, it's funny. Okay. So there is my bright rainbow card. I'm going to put that aside and I'm going to take good quality pictures of these later and I will post them over in our Stamp TV, Gina K Designs and Stamp TV Friends group. Here I'm zooming in. There we go. Sorry, that was like a roller coaster. Oh, yeah, Rebecca. I see Rebecca Marco here. Rebecca, can you link your Etsy store for everybody? Because I was sh showing them my um, Tidy Towel case and they were asking for the link. So if you wouldn't mind adding your Etsy store link so they can go get a case from you, that would be awesome. Thank you. Okay, so I'm gonna do some of these. I think I have to do like one of each one. I'm gonna start in the middle though. That's a really good way to start. Start in the middle because then you'll kind of know how you can move across the card. If you start over here and you work your way over and then there's not enough room for a flower, then one will be off the card. It's just better to start in the middle. So I'm gonna start in the middle. And I think for these little stamps, I'm gonna use my ink cube because I'll have a little bit more control inking them. And I'm using a block for this. Okay, here we go. So in the middle, there we go, one. I'm gonna clean it and we'll get something else. Let's use this one over here. So we'll use the three flowers and then we'll fill in with the little leaves. We'll see how that looks. Okay. Now these are these are kind of skinny, the stems. So if you want to just put it on its face and just pick it up with the block, that might be easier. I love this one. This is a cool dandelion. Okay. We'll do this one over here. And we'll clean that one and get rid of it. You know, I could be good and put them all back on the stamp sheet, but I'm just throwing them all in a pile. And then we'll use this one. This is a very solid one, so I have to rub over it. And that one we'll kind of put down here. And it's okay if some of them don't go all the way up to the top. Okay, so bring this one down here like that. Now we'll fill in with the little babies. So we'll start with this little leafy guy. I could really use a tiny block for this, but let's put him in here. 
This is called Take Care. It's actually the free incentive set that you can get right now with any order of $75 or more. It automatically ships, so you get it free. It will be available in our regular inventory next month when our next release happens. Our new kit comes out. Everything will go into our regular inventory. I'll put this one down here. Ooh, I think I moved a little bit, but that's all right. Okay. And do this one. I love um, silhouette stamps. I really do. And if you love silhouette stamps, you're going to love our next kit, too. There's just so many fun things. Okay, I'll do this one up here. That. Hmm, should I do like maybe one more coming in over here? I think I will. I have to be careful because I've got that line. What is the next kit? Our next release we are hoping is going to be more toward the end of September. We'll have some better details for you soon. Now, I still want to do something over here, and I haven't used this one yet, so I'm going to use this one, but I'm not going to ink the whole thing up. Just the top. I'm just going to get a couple little berries in there. Ooh, that's not inked enough, though. Okay. All right. Now we'll put our greeting on. This is a simple card. But don't you love silhouette stamps? All right, we're all in this together. So before I do that, I'm going to mount it onto the black panel. This way I know it's nice and sealed down and nice and flat. So I'm gonna, I like that. Do you like that autumn blend? I really like that. It's nice, a little different. And if you really want to go full-blown rainbow with the autumn, you could mix in um, some fresh asparagus, which is a great autumn green. You can add in some powder blue, which isn't too dark, but definitely not a bright turquoise. And then you can also add in plum punch as the purple, and that would really be pretty. Okay. So again, this is going to go onto a white card base for sure, like that. But I want to get that greeting on there. For that, I will use the Misty. I'll just, just scooch out there. We have a, a remote that will fade, not fade, but um, zoom in and zoom out, but it takes a long time. It's a very nice beautiful fade, but I'm an impatient stamper, so <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> all right, here we go. We're all in this together. I could put it like right in the middle like that. I think I'll do that. The good thing is, I mean, this is, you want to get it straight, but, you know, it's so scripty that it's got a little movement in it, and it's a little forgiving if it's not perfect. Okay. So I'm going to use I'm going to use the ink cube again because this is a tiny little stamp. It's so pretty though. I really like it. Okay, here we go. And then we'll just do a little loop, loop. See if that was good. Yes, that is good. We're all in this together. Now, if you wanted to, you could add pinks in here, too. I think some pink in with all of those warm tones. A warm pink, like Dusty Rose, would be a good choice. But I think pink would be pretty in there, too. The combinations are really endless. So when you think rainbow, it doesn't always have to be traditional rainbow. All right, where are we, where are we at with time? Oh, I don't know that I'll get one more card in. It's really quite late. But you know, that that pastel rainbow, I mean, I, I'm going to grab the Nature's Silhouette stamp set and I'm going to do that right now because that's all you need for that. 
I'm going to flip this. I don't like the way I folded it, so I'm going to flip it. Okay, and you can always add some delicate embellishments, some little, you know, gold and bronze sequins. I really have a something on there. There we go. Okay, so there's that card. So here's the two of them together. Two rainbows. Okay, let's do one more. We'll do this. And let me grab my nature's. Oh, I have so many stamps over here that you guys can't see it. Nature's silhouettes. Because don't you think that needs to be on there with that light rainbow, that pastel? We got to do it. I can't not do it. It wouldn't feel right to go through all that rainbow making and then not finish it off. So I will be using this big one because we have to make a somewhat quick card. Question and whether you plan to go to the three days again. Question about whether I plan to go to the three days again. Um, maybe. We'll have to see. Um, I mean, I would, I would like to but I don't know if I can commit to it every single week. That's the only thing I'm worried about. I'm not sure that, that I would have time to do it every single week. Um, just because I have some other things that I'm working on for you guys, and I really do look forward to that time where I can sit and work on those things as well. But, you know, we might be able to go to a modified schedule of what we had before where we do... Uh, Monday, Wednesday, and then the following week, do Monday, Wednesday, and a Friday night PJ party. So here I'm using the Nature's, this is the um, the Natural Silhouette stamp set. This was last month's kit, and we're still waiting for these to come back in. I've got a lot of them now coming. Okay, that's so pretty. <laughs> oh, gosh. It's always so striking when you see a silhouette over a rainbow. I could just make these kinds of cards all day long. I have to sometimes fight myself to not make them. All right, should we use that same greeting? We're all in this together. Let's see. That's a little big. I can't, it's too big. It goes outside of the, the silhouette or outside of the frame. So. Let's do thinking of you, because for sure we're doing that. We're thinking of a lot of our friends, so I can always use that card. I like this font, too, on this one. I haven't done this pastel rainbow in a really long time. I think the last time I did that was probably before I had all these colors of ink. It's been a long time. All right. And thinking of you, put that down and we'll chuck it. <laughs> there we go. Oh, pretty, pretty. All right. So we'll throw this card together. And then I have a closing thought for you guys tonight. Um, let's see. I'm so afraid to get black ink because. I have it everywhere. Let's see if I have a thing that fits. Do I have one that fits here? No, I think I'm gonna have to trim this down. I'm not gonna get the die cutting machine out for this. I'll cut this one. It won't be as perfect as the ones that I cut with the dies, but hopefully it won't look too bad. So this is three and a half inches by four and three quarter inches. So I'll cut this one, four and three quarter inches, four and seven eighths inches. So I'm just cutting the whole panel one eighth of an inch bigger all around. And then that should be pretty close. Uh, it's always a little bit off, but. That's the name, Chuck it. Chuck it, that's it, the Chuck it. Chuck was so, um, so sweet. He came into the forum and he was like, thank you so much. <laughs> and I'm like, thank, thank you so much for sending me such a great tool. <laughs>
he had to make a statement though because people were like will you make one for me will you make one for me and he was like no i can't make them for everybody but they're so easy to make he gave the instructions so all right one more white card base you don't really want to use color with these because the blends themselves are so beautiful you just don't want anything to mess it up and i had to use this one i think we made that last card in three minutes four minutes but it's all right that's just pretty isn't it just soft so here we go three delightful rainbow cards i'll back up a little bit here there we go so you guys can see these a little bit better there we go. And again, I'll take pictures of all of these and I'll put them in our Facebook group. If you are not a member of our Facebook group, it's called Gina K Designs and Stamp TV Friends. We would love to have you join us. It's a really, really nice group. It's a private group, so we do have to approve you and we certainly will. Um, and everybody is so helpful and so positive. That's what I love about our group. Everybody is supportive and we comment on each other's stuff and everybody shares so many beautiful things in there. So come and join us. It's a lot of fun. All right. Three cards tonight. Wow. Okay. So I know that, um, that it's been tough lately, but here's my final quote for the night. Always remember that the present situation is not your final destination. There are better days ahead. Thank you guys so much for joining me. We will be back next Monday and I'm, I'm going to try to get either Rena or Tom. Tom, you think you want to join me? Sure. All right. <laughs> well, he said that nice and loud, didn't he? So we'll get Tom to join me and we'll do something really fun and crazy. And um, in the meantime, throughout the weekend, especially those of you down south and out west with fires and hurricanes, stay safe. Everybody out there, stay healthy. I love you all. And I'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.